<laughs> Classic landing. Welcome back. Welcome. <laughs> what are you doing today? Same shit as always. Same working, <laughs> working, and in the meantime, having a break for food and um, going out with the dog. And oh, good. Continue. We're recording anyway, so <sighs> it is what it is. Now we got. <sighs> <laughs> um what a sound check just post the video <laughs> you're a hard guy to track down christian yeah yes, yes. i'm i'm always uh, kind of out of time and busy and yeah sorry i know i saw a video you posted uh, uh, the other day uh, a racing video i should say you were racing a car or trying to <laughs> who was yeah, that we you flying one of the or we were the biggest track in austria um, formula one <laughs> Yeah, it's the biggest, it's also used for Formula One, and they are actually doing it for the um, Austrian OAF, it's the B, or it's a, the, the um, state-owned TV station, and they do it um, um, as a short intro to the Formula One Grand Prix, I think, in a few weeks. That's cool, really nice. It will have some FPV footage inside. I have already seen the pre-cut, and it looks kind of really nice. Nice. So Christian uh, got the link uh, with the um, uh, newest pit toolbox. Oh, good. Um, he already installed it, so we should be we should start right away. Okay, so what am I doing here? So I have the, the copter plugged in. I've already done... So what I'm doing is I'm varying the PD gain, right? I'm going to do a bunch mm -hmm. of different tests with the gain. I've done one test already at uh, 0 0.5, and I'm just going to go up by steps of two. A uh, couple things to point out. I turned off D-min. And I've got feed forward, the stick response gain. I got feed forward turned down as low as it'll go with the sliders. And then I've got the transition up at one. I've already done one at 0 0.5. I'm going to do 0 0.7. So, yeah, see you in a minute, guys. Just <laughs> a camera cover. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The flow was scanning. All squad is here. And the end not the Ich habe eins auf Reserve, das kann ich dir geben und dann kannst du mir eins nachbestellen einfach. Wenn das für dich gehen würde. Ja. Ich bin drauf gekommen, den einen Kopter, den ich da im Wald fallen habe lassen. Hey, that's number two. So I always unplug. And the reason I unplug is because then it's when I go and start up again, it'll start a new log file as opposed to making a bunch of little log files in the one. Much more in control. I'm just going to get my headphones on there now. Yeah. It's a I'm bit powerful. I'm still amazed on how easy you start tuning. Just in your basement, do some minor maneuvers, no flips, no rolls, and this is still working. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, it's kind of neat, right? Okay, yes. let's, let's go. It's so much faster to tune. Do you want to pass the file over to Christian and have him um i could evaluate it yeah why not so that's the reason why you unplug the battery to have separate files and it's a lot easier uh, because i used to create a one file with several sub logs but then you can't really label them in in the pit toolbox so it's a lot easier and, and more handy to have separate files i would recommend to call, name it by the copter you use because if you have several copters to tune then you mix them up that's what i do or or if you're sending it out like if you're going to go into the black box log site and you want people's feedback on this then it's always good to send the logs with your your name in the beginning or something because yes. a lot of people could have the same frame so yeah but i'll call this to i'll start with the bw pratt or pratt and this would be uh pd gain what is it i think 07.5 i started with i think ah okay yeah oh running out of time we've removed the 40 minute time on your group meeting a gift oh, nice. from zoom love it that's how because we are so important they watched what we are doing and decided to give us three minutes because it's important for the world yeah exactly I think I would just fine. share my whole screen, which is probably yeah. She has to yeah. click away all the porn first. Share the, the toolbox. Yeah. And then 
Oh, make sure you turn off. Uh, you, I know you were snooping into that Flight One uh, code that was released. <laughs> I, should, I was the hacker. <laughs> you were the hacker. <laughs> Shall I just open the files in the meantime? All of them? Yeah. yeah. That's it's loading. Me. As I said, unfortunately, my PC is not the fastest on this planet. As my oh. gaming PC just broke, and this is the replacement out of old stuff. So yeah. Not a problem. Okay, yeah. there. What are we seeing now, Brian? So we're seeing a bunch of uh, roll and pitch movements. Obviously nothing on Yaw. I'm, I'm not very good at controlling the copter on Yaw in the, in the basement. But So then you just okay. go over here. You can see your, the drop down where it says BW Pratt PED gain. Just click that little drop down menu below the select button. Yep. So that's all your files in there, right? And as you click each one, you can see, just click it and it loads it up on the left there. So you can see the... Yeah. The movement, mm -hmm. right? Go through all of them, yeah. Yeah, there, the, things got out of hand with this one a little bit. <laughs> I almost struck the roof there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now you can you can edit the start and end. So if somebody has a long file with different moves on, on the same file, sometimes you have a throttle uh, sweep and some basement tuning moves on the same file. You'd actually um, reduce the the the, the time. Um, frame to the most interesting part. Where should I pull, uh, um, put my mouse on? Where should so I? The, the blue button, step response. The blue one. One. Yeah. Okay. And you can Select just all of them. Yeah, just, just one. Just grab them all. Yeah. So you can scroll. Yeah. Um, yay! Yay! <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Exactly <laughs> what we we expected, isn't it? <laughs> it's actually quite interesting. So could you could you open that up? to the full screen so now number one obviously is is the dark trace the the dark brownish red trace yeah. and you can see this classic oscillation there so this is really low p right mm -hmm. so the so the peak is coming down the oscillation is slow it is is disappearing and you're getting a nice uh earlier and earlier onset mm -hmm. but it's diminishing return so it's diminishing not returns. infinite yeah, yeah, yeah. I but probably could, use, could have gone another one. Yeah, could use a little bit more, even like yeah, uh, one dot five. It's surprising. but you see the, the 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 negative overshoot is decreasing uh, when it gets green. Yeah, yeah, I see that the green line is the first one to basically get back to where we want it to be. So the least overshooting um, looks good actually. All all through the time um, and additionally, and this was also one of the things we already talked about with the um, lowest latency so far. So uh, just looking at those two charts, I would pick green and be happy. And as you said, might even consider lowering it or, or increasing the PD gain to 1.5, 1.7 and check out the results again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Check. That's where I'm missing the full picture here. I probably should have increased it a little bit more again. Mm -hmm. And then if that if the next one or two don't come down in the peak anymore, then I would start to add some D. So it's pushing the PD ratio. I mean, um, one question, one recommendation. That the uh, first question um, regarding the latency. What's a good value? What should I aim for? Is 22 already fine? Should I go for 15? Do I need 11? It, it's going to depend on the copter that you're that you're running, but it shouldn't be the defining characteristic of, of whether or not your your tune is correct. The key yeah. is is as you keep adding gain, if the peak doesn't come down anymore, then you have to then move to the PD ratio and actually start to add more D gain. So pushing the slider to the right. So maybe I can get that one more file and then send that file to you. And I'll also get you a throttle sweep file. Five minutes later. I couldn't resist and I actually had to look at it. I'd also, I didn't want to send you something and not it be complete, oh. but I couldn't have made it up better. Can I just add the files to yep. the already? Okay, yep. and then I will also share my screen. Maybe this is work yeah, yeah. for someone. Yeah, yeah, share your screen again there. Back at the start, let's add more log files. Okay. Four tests. Um, more tests. All of them? Yep. Yeah. Load them all in. Yeah, so I so what's there is basically one more test with the PD gain turned up to 1.5. Mm -hmm. And then the other two tests are two throttle sweeps. <laughs> My pupils are still dilated from doing those by hand, actually. 
because I couldn't find a way to attach it to this rig. So, But the first one is with no TPA, and the second one I added TPA, and you'll see exactly why. So here we have 1.5. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to then our step tool and remove those and then hit run. There you go. So the dark green is the newest one. Should I should we just load those two to compare the last or the best two? You or? could you could do that. I mean, yeah, just do that. So if you want to just hit reset and then just uh and then just load the last two. Because those are obviously the best ones, right? Right. So you can see here, like basically not much changed. And we went up two full <laughs> notches. So so we've reached the bottom, right? Yes. That's the point mm -hmm. there. We've reached the bottom. So so by all accounts now, like if we wanted to get rid of that little tiny bit of overshoot, we could tip the D gain up a little bit. It, so I'm comfortable there. I would say I would say the P gains maybe at about 60, 63 is, is okay. And I'd mm -hmm. probably bring the D gain up another five points. So we can leave this now and um can we look at the spectral analyzer for the throttle sweeps? Yeah, so you go to the spectral analyzer, the red button, and now what you want to do is go to your presets on the right-hand side yeah. and select gyro prefilt gyro, AABB configuration. Does that make sense to you when you look at that? What does that mean? Um, my, my assumption here also um, would be that you compare two things to each other. Um, so you compare gyro prefilled and gyro for two log files. That's that's right. And okay. the idea with the little the little vertical line between the AABB is just to kind of represent the columns that you're looking at okay. there. But I, I couldn't figure a better way to do it. But it seems like most people are getting it. But so yeah, it's just select that one, number four. Okay. And now what you want to go is in the drop down, select for the first two pick no tpa and the second two yeah. you're already on board here you you're like you're a step ahead of me <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, well, it's so intuitive to do that here so it was not a big deal <laughs> all right click run any other settings yeah. i would need to change no nah, just click run we'll no but here the, the gyro prefilled and gyro is already set so yeah i, I got the the, the the intention you had with aabb yeah. I mean, it's hard to, it's just a small field and you would need probably two sentences of explanation. So, yeah. Ooh, that, so, that looks but here's the critical thing. Just look at that beaming horizontal band. Mm. Okay. Isn't that crazy? Okay, now just hit the sub 100 hertz there button. You see at the top? Um, but, um, yeah. uh, normally the the oscillation and prop wash band for my copters is between 30 and 60 hertz but for this rig it's a lot higher frequency so what i'm going to want you to do is go you see down where it says frequency limits hertz down yeah. at the bottom at the, at the right in the column yeah. Yeah. just set the, the the first number to 50 yeah and the second number to 80. Give me a second, the PC is working. Yeah, and now you see what it does is it puts those yellow horizontal bands around that yeah. oscillation point. And if you look to the right, this is the with the, the TPA added yeah, on. on the right, mm -hmm. it's gone, right? Yeah. So the TPA really lowered it down. Now you see a big blob of low frequency stuff going on in the bottom right? That's yeah. my hand holding it and stuff. That's really <laughs> low frequency. So <laughs> as a throttle gets out there, you're you know. crazy holding the you're shaking a the throttle yeah, speed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're shaking at 10 hertz about around, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever, right? So <laughs> uh, you can hear this, this uh this high frequency oscillation. This is like that D-term D trilling you would hear sometimes, or the sound of like having the PID gains too high. As I've discussed numerous times now with uh with Michael as well, this can be reduced as well by reducing filtering. So if your filtering is too high, you'll get this even with much lower PID gains. Um, I've already gone and had these filters put as low as they can go. So this copter currently has no gyro low pass filters, only RPM and only a dynamic single dynamic notch on the gyro. Mm -hmm. And I believe the D term is a low pass filter by quad set at 140 hertz. So I'm pretty much as low as I want to go at any of that. This is a good indicator that, look, you know, the PIDs were set right according to the step response but certainly i was i'm, I'm seeing this uh oscillation with no tpa and that's what i noticed in the field and it kept 
telling me to turn the PID gains down. And I realized all I needed was a little TPA to take care of that. So now just click the 2D button. You can see the magnitude of this because it'll jump right out at you there. So there's that peak, right? It's yeah. at like, right? And you look over at the blue, it's gone. Right? Um, so would just enabling TPA already get rid of this peak totally? Anything else I would, would need to do? Fine tuning of TPA or um, did you chose that value by gut feeling? Um, I chose it by gut feeling, but I, it's basically TPA of 0.4 and the cutoff, the break point is I think 1250 or 1300. It is by gut feeling, but uh, and maybe I didn't need to go as much as that, but I think it's a pretty good number so far. Yeah, it worked for me. Don't assume that number is going to work for every copter. Um, um I've heard good best practice to start. The starting point is where your hover point is, and uh, the dampening depends on your on your copter on your on your D value. Well, PD if if you choose to use TPA with a P and D, yeah. so that's probably something you have to find out in the field, because mm -hmm. in basement tuning we normally have only a throttle around twenty to thirty percent, but where TPA doesn't kick in. Okay. Yeah. But th right. That's good to know. So I would start here, give it a try, and then see if I can improve uh, improve yeah. it by, by either changing the the, but, the power or the cutoff frequency. I but think with with this tool, you can see where to set, uh, how to set it. So if you start to see the harmonics in a high throttle range, yeah, so you, you might see. either want to reduce field delay or. Uh, um, um, play a little around with TPA. Yeah, and you see here it's uh, on the left that it's starting to kick in at about, say, 40% throttle. Um, the break point that I started, I think, was 1250. So that's about 25% throttle. So, but it's going to take a while for it. It's going to start <laughs> to changing there, but it's not mm -hmm. going to be at its maximum point there. So, Sorry. if you see the oscillation starting at 40% throttle, you don't want to start your TPA breakpoint at 40% throttle. You want to go back a bit because it's not going to be, it's going to go down slowly with throttle, right? Mm -hmm. so for um, me, again, as someone who's not as familiar, such a, a minor red pattern would be okay in comparison to these really bright, nearly white spots, which are a, a no-go. Well, that's awesome, guys. This was this was a fun little thing. I didn't think anything would yeah. come of it, but without any plan, actually, it kind of worked out okay. Um, <laughs> so I, I feel like this, I've got to give this a try today now. we got the sun shining here now, and we learned something. I enjoyed it, yeah. Yeah. I didn't expect it to come about that nicely, so that last bit of data really, really uh, nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was really nice seeing you again, Christian, and uh, as always, Michael, uh, we have to do this again. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.